Good day everyone! I am Madalmay D. Ahera, a second year student of Bachelor of Elementary Education and for today's video, I am going to talk about the uses of ICT policies in the teaching and learning environment. It is generally believed that information and communication technologies or ICTs can empower teachers and learners. It can promote change and foster the development of 21st century skills. There is also a widespread belief that ICTs can and will empower teachers and learners, transforming teaching and learning processes from being highly teacher-dominated to learner-centered and that this transformation will result in increased learning gains for students, creating and allowing for opportunities for learners. Let's talk about the first one, Digital Culture and Digital Literacy. Computer technologies and other aspects of digital culture have changed the ways people live, work, play, and learn, impacting the construction and distribution of knowledge and power around the world. Graduates who are less familiar with digital culture are increasingly at a disadvantage in the national and global economy. Digital Literacy it refers to the skills of searching for, discerning, and producing information as well as the critical use of new media for full participation in society has thus become an important consideration for curriculum frameworks. As digital technologies become more prevalent in schools and in our lives, opportunities and new challenges for teaching and learning arise. Developing the skills of lifelong learning, digital competence, intercultural competence, and collaboration are important for both learners and educators. Learners need to develop skills that will enable them to use these digital technologies to create, communicate, and collaborate. Therefore, educators need to design and provide authentic and meaningful digital learning experiences. ICT and Teacher Professional Development Teachers need specific professional development opportunities in order to increase their ability to use ICT for formative learning assessments, individualized instruction, accessing online resources, and for fostering student interaction and collaboration. Such training in ICT should positively impact teachers' general attitudes towards ICT in the classroom, but it should also provide specific guidance on ICT teaching and learning within each discipline. Without this support, teachers tend to use ICT for skill-based applications, limiting student academic thinking. To support teachers as they change their teaching, it is also essential for education managers, supervisors, teacher educators, and decision makers to be trained in ICT use. Ensuring Benefits of ICT Investment To ensure the investment made in ICT benefits students, additional conditions must be met. School policies need to provide schools with the minimum acceptable infrastructure for ICT, including stable and affordable internet connectivity, and security measures such as filters and site blockers. Teacher policies need to target basic ICT literacy skills, ICT use in pedagogical settings, and discipline-specific uses. Successful implementation of ICT requires integration of ICT in the curriculum. Finally, digital content needs to be developed in local languages and reflect local culture. Ongoing technical, human, and organizational supports on all of these issues are needed to ensure access and effective use of ICT. Resource-constrained contexts. The total cost of ICT ownership is considerable. Training of teachers and administrators, connectivity, technical support, and software, amongst others. When bringing ICT into classrooms, policies should use an incremental pathway, establishing infrastructure and bringing in sustainable and easily upgradable ICT. Schools in some countries have begun allowing students to bring their own mobile technology, such as laptop, tablet, or smartphone, into class rather than providing such tools to all students. It is an approach called bring your own device. However, not all families can afford devices or service plans for their children. 
Schools must ensure all students have equitable access to ICT devices for learning. Let's proceed to some common educational applications of ICT. These include one laptop per child, tablets, interactive whiteboards or smart board, e-readers, and flipped classroom. Let's talk first on the first one, one laptop per child. Less expensive laptops have been designed for use in school on a one-on-one -on -one basis with features like lower power consumption, a low-cost operating system, and special reprogramming and mesh network functions. Despite efforts to reduce cost, however, providing one laptop per child may be too costly for some developing countries. Tablets Tablets are small computers with a touch screen, allowing input without a keyboard or mouse. Inexpensive learning software or apps can be downloaded onto tablets, making them a versatile tool for learning. The most effective apps develop higher-order thinking skills and provide creative and individualized options for students to express their understandings. E-readers E-readers are electronic devices that can hold hundreds of books in digital form and they are increasingly utilized in the delivery of reading material. Students, both skilled readers and reluctant readers, have had positive responses to the use of e-readers for independent reading. Features of e-readers that can contribute to positive use include their portability and long battery life, response to text, and the ability to define unknown words. Additionally, many classic book titles are available for free in e-book form. Interactive whiteboards or smart boards Interactive whiteboards allow projected computer images to be displayed, manipulated, dragged, clicked, or copied. Simultaneously, handwritten notes can be taken on the board and saved for later use. Interactive whiteboards are associated with whole class instruction rather than student-centered activities. Student engagement is generally higher when ICT is available for student use throughout the classroom. Flipped Classrooms the flipped classroom model involving lecture and practice at home via computer-guided instruction and interactive learning activities in class can allow for an expanded curriculum. There is little investigation on student learning outcomes of flipped classrooms. Student perceptions about flipped classrooms are mixed but generally positive as they prefer the cooperative learning activities in class over lecture. And now, let's talk about inclusiveness consideration. Digital divide. The term digital divide describes differences in access to digital media and the internet both within and between nations, as well as the gap between those who are digitally literate and have the necessary skills to use media and the internet. The world's poorest people experience socio-economic inequality that is both created by and reinforced by the digital divide. In order to bring media, the internet, and digital literacy to all students, not just those who are the easiest to reach, policies must consciously close this gap. Minority language groups. In comparison to students from the majority, those whose mother tongue is not the same as the language of instruction are less likely to have computers and internet access at home. In contrast to their majority peers, who use ICT to gather information, prepare talks and papers, and communicate more, minority language students have less information online in their own language, which puts them at a disadvantage. Nevertheless, ICT tools can also help minority language students, particularly in learning the official language of instruction through features like automatic speech recognition and the availability of real audiovisual materials. Students with different styles of learning. ICT can provide diverse options for taking in and processing information, making sense of ideas, and expressing learning. Over 87% of students learn best through visual and tactile modalities, and ICT can help these students experience the information instead of just reading and hearing it. Mobile devices can also offer programs or apps that provide extra support to students with special needs with features such as simplified screens and instructions, consistent placement of menus, and control features, 
graphics combined with text, audio feedback, ability to set pace and level of difficulty, appropriate and ambiguous feedback, and easy error correction. Being literate in the digital world is crucial right now, especially for us college students. When we eventually shift into the working world, it will also be very significant. People are we the college students as we graduate need to interact with others in digital settings at work, use information appropriately, and collaborate to come up with new concepts and products. The most important thing is to maintain digital identity and well-being because the digital landscape is changing quickly. And that's it for today's video about the uses of ICT policies in the teaching and learning environment. Thank you for watching. Bye!